I'd like to introduce you to Sabrina Ponkival Cooper, um, a graduate of O'Hare University and dental hygienist and nutritional expert. So um, first of all, um, I just want to take you back so you can tell everybody kind of like where you come from, um, where you're living now and all the, all the early stuff in your life. Um, so I started in uh, St. Catharines and I had a really big interest in dental hygiene at a very, very young age because my uncle was a dentist um, mm. in, in St. Catharines. And um, so I was influenced by the hygienist he actually had. She was very uh, friendly and she was just so warm and made my dental visits very enjoyable. And so I always said, oh, I want to be just like her when I grow up. I want to be like she was fun and funky. <laughs> Any, anyway, fast forward, I kind of like teeter totter between that. And then I started maybe teaching accounting. And uh, then I went into co-op. I went to co-op uh, a placement for high school and decided well, I might as well try it and see what it's like to be in the dental uh, office. And uh, I really enjoyed the place where I was at. The dentist, it was very welcoming. And so was the staff and uh, hit it off. They actually had me working right off the bat as a dental assistant, helping out. Uh, the dentist was like, you know, very, not doing x-rays, just, you know, doing the minimal things that I could do. Yeah. Um, but it was really nice. And uh, so that led me into dental assisting, which then led me into uh, my dental hygiene career. They're like, no, you have to go further. Like, you have to do this. But in Canada at the time, you had to do uh, dental assisting first, then you had to do uh, a work period, and then go to school again, and then apply, reapply for dental hygiene, you couldn't go right into it as it is now. Um, and so that was kind of the way. So instead of, I kind of bypassed it and decided I would go to the United States to study because oh. it was close to home, um, not far um, because I was going to get an associate's degree um, upon graduating opposed to a diploma that they were offering in, in Canada. So I went that route and I graduated in 2000 from um, Monroe Community College in Rochester. So I lived in Rochester for a little bit of time. And, and then from there, I uh, actually got a, uh, I met a dentist who was looking for someone to go work in Italy. So I went right mm. off to Naples, Italy and worked for four years there. And uh, it was a great, wow. great experience. Um, I worked with, um, you know, a prosthodontist and orthodontist, uh, periodontist, like just a, a plethora of people who just had just enormous amounts of knowledge. And just coming right out of school um, to a place where it didn't really have hygiene as a program or as a treatment, really, you know, there was no school set up yet for dental hygiene back then. Um, it was just sort of getting going. It was interesting treating patients who were kind of leery about this and wanting to pay for something that they were like, I don't need this, sure. you know? So um, it was so, really so, interesting. Can I stop you there for a sec? So yeah. did you go to Italy um, not speaking any Italian? No Italian. No wow, Italian. That, My mom's that was brave. Not, I speak Spanish. Spanish. I have Spanish as a background and some French because we lived in Canada. Of course, we learned both yeah. languages, um, English and French. And so, um, yes, it was very, no family there, just myself. And so I guess being an only child maybe helped me along that. I traveled quite a bit with my, you know, to Mexico. So, but it was very, uh, it was a little nerve wracking, but I, yeah. I was excited. I was very, very excited to, to on this journey. And so, it so how did you, uh, how did you, um, sorry to interrupt you. How did you okay. manage the language problem in Italy. So basically the dentist, I should have said this, the dentist who, who was looking for someone who wanted to start this program, uh, dental hygiene in his office, um, studied in, in Rochester at the oh. dental, Eastman Dental School. And um, so he was very um, keen on, on expanding his office. Um, that uh, dentist that brought me on, it didn't quite work out the way I had planned. And so I found another dentist who also studied in Boston. And that's where I spent the four years in his office. Um, and as well, he spoke English very, very, very well. And um, I just kind of had like a trend, he translated a lot of the things that I did. Okay. Um, he would explain what I was doing. And then slowly but surely, I started to learn um, the words and what I needed to say. And some, it was broken. And it was Neapolitan at that. So Neapolitan, uh, is a dialect of Italy. So that was, it was a challenge to understand if I was learning Italian, Neapolitan, like a little Spanish thrown in there. So, but we were, I was able to communicate. So that it was, it, yeah. So that's how I kind of did that. 
So, so what advice would you give somebody who was thinking of going from USA or Canada to Italy or a Mediterranean European country like that? I think, you know, I honestly think it's a, a really great experience to go off and travel um, before you actually settle down in a practice. I mean, my thought process when I went into dental hygiene was that I didn't want to be stuck or not stuck, but confined to four walls, you know, and just be in one practice the whole time. I wanted to experience different areas of dentistry as well and um, in different areas of the world because, you know, we can get caught up that we're uh, you know, that one way is the right way, maybe, you know, and maybe other parts of the world aren't as, as, as great, or they don't have the knowledge, but there's so much more knowledge everywhere. And I just think it's a great experience to expand and uh, learn new skills. I mean, coming right out of school for myself, and working on patients who had never seen a hygienist before, just sharpen those skills right up, I tell you, you know, like it was uh, a lot of hand scaling and, you know, really um, people would be like, how do you get this done so fast? Like when I came home to, 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 to uh, Toronto and I would be like, well, if you saw the D and E, I don't know, the, the classification of, cal of calculus and per I mean, periodontal disease, then you know that the patients here in, in, in North America are not as bad as, you know, you would, would, would seem to imagine right like so it, it really did sharpen my skills in a great way yeah. and I would definitely recommend it um just on a side note I do do uh it led to volunteer work as well once I returned home from from Italy and had that great experience I said like I really definitely need to do something um I was I, I didn't have children I wasn't able to have children when we were uh when I got married so I said I want to do something for children and so I thought what great way what a better way than to ever just donate my time to children and and dental care um it was my wish when my grandmother was around in Mexico I said I am going to come to Mexico and give all the kids in the neighborhood dental care this is when I was young young and uh she passed on so I wanted to live live this memory on and, and this thing that I wanted to do. So I found a group in, in Dent, uh, United States called Global Dental Relief. And they're a great organization who do worldwide uh, volunteering projects for dental. And so I started in Guatemala since it was Spanish speaking and did eight years consecutively there um, wow. working on with children in that group. Um, my husband came along as a non-dental volunteer, so he was sterilizing instruments and, and engaging with the children. And uh, so I also encourage a lot of volunteering as well, because it's just, uh, there's so much need everywhere. And, and, it, and if you're afraid to travel to these other big countries, like, you know, that are far, it's expensive. There are some ones that are like not as expensive and more affordable, um, and you can give back while also being on vacation. So it's, it's kind of a win-win, right? Like, for us that's, as uh, professionals to give back. Sure, I mean, that's fantastic. So you've been donating a lot of your time for a very long time for, for yes. these people. <laughs> yes, quite a bit of a time. And I'm actually, uh, and now um, as we'll get into the conversation, kind of shifting into a different direction, but uh, I also am going to be just doing some trip leading with, with the organizations as well and uh, leading the dental hygiene areas um, with the experience and knowledge that I've had from past trips um, to help everybody else navigate on their first volunteer trips because it can be a little daunting at times when you don't have all your comforts of a regular clinic uh, environment. So um, you um, decided to choose O'Hare University to um, complete your bachelor's degree. And correct me if I'm wrong, I reckon that was about six years ago. I think so. Your guess is fine. <laughs> Time's just going by with COVID uh, years that you've lost. Uh, <laughs> it seems like just yesterday, but yeah, I think it's probably about that. So, so how was that experience for you? Um, I really enjoyed it. I really um, enjoyed the one-on-one -on -one learning experience. Um, it expanded as well, like uh, ways of thinking and um, expressing and questioning, like just different, like aspects of dental hygiene that I had never thought of <clears throat> really um, that way. So it really, really expanded the way that I thought of dental hygiene and um, it grew my practice. When I was in practice in clinical, it really did like all the, uh, you know, motivational interviewing and all the, um, the and the 
projects that we did. I mean, I did one on um, um, dry dry brushing, and sure. uh, <clears throat> and so that was. I know I had all my patients and all the patients that I had had asked to try this with me along with me are were still doing it when I left my practice just recently, and they were very grateful for it. Um, and so you know, it just it, it, it was it was a great experience. That's um, very kind of you to say that. As a somebody that's been developing the curriculum, for somebody to say to us that the one big thing was it, it changed the way that you were thinking is probably the biggest um, compliment that you could give us because that's really what we're trying to do is just get people to think differently. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, so so then um, after that, was it was it after that or before that or during that that you started to get into nutrition? It was kind of around that, yeah, it was kind of around that same time. Sorry, to interrupt. It was kind of around that same time. Um, you know, throughout my career, I really noticed. Um, I kind of did my own little study, I guess, if you want, if you will, um, about like just not writing things down, but in the chart, I would kind of note things that on, on different individuals that I was seeing and. I noticed that a lot of them, uh, the one common uh, thing in a lot of and in, in a lot of individuals was nutrition play and nutrition and stress played a big role in the oral health of, of these individuals. And so when they started to make these shifts, if they if they were calm and then started to get, they would come to me and be like, "Oh, I poke their mouths. And I'd be like, "What's wrong? Like, why is there all this inflammation? And what is going on?" And and then they would tell me all like they would like I would start asking motivational you know questions and I would ask all these things in order to get some information and I realized that they were going through a stressful period or maybe they were like you know gone through some loss or there was just a lot of things going on and so then the following appointments or few you know they would kind of get better and I'd give them some things to do and as soon as that kind of fizzled out it was it was so much better or even with nutrition it was changing their dietary habits. Um, and they, and things started shifting, you know, and I was like, either for the better or for the worse. And so that became a big part of my um, treatment planning was nutritional counseling, mind body, um, and just not giving them a regime, but just including it in my uh, talk to them or my, you know, sure. educational piece with them. So did you notice that you would get better results from patients when they changed their nutrition? to a healthier nutrition rather than the same old brush and floss lecture. I did. I really did notice that just by changing a few tweaks and for them focusing more on eating whole foods, um, abandoning some eating practices that they had already originally had. Um, and they kind of did it on their own accord. It wasn't like I said, okay, here's a diet plan and here's what you have to do. I just began telling them what I was experiencing as myself and my experience, right. of what I was going through through my own personal, um, growth in, in nutrition and, and trying to heal myself with foods because I had studied, I started, began to course, um, a culinary, uh, certified culinary nutrition program. And so it was all basically through food. There was no medications or vitamins, just everything through your food. And so that began to be incorporated. And so, yeah, it was a big, huge shift. And people just, I couldn't believe it. I just, I honestly was just, you know, instead of, I was no longer really going like brush and floss because everybody like, I know, I know I need to floss more. Like that was, <laughs> that's the big thing, right? So when they would come in, they'd be like, oh, I'm enjoying fruits and I'm eating healthier. And I'm like, wow, you look great. Fabulous. Like, wow, your teeth are looking great. Like your gums are so much better. They would be more motivated to continue yeah. this on. And so this just continued my journey. And I thought, you know, I love my dental hygiene career, but I really um, had been doing it for a long time. And I kind of felt like I just wanted to shift gears a little bit, um, not to abandon it, but just to kind of focus more on, on something that was, I was really passionate about and learn more about it. Um, and that's what brings me to uh, where I am today. So how did your, um, how did your diet change? Your personal diet? Because you're saying that your like own personal diet. diet kind of led that led you down that path. Right, right. So, you know, overall, I was pretty good. I went to Italy, had pretty, you know, their Mediterranean mm. style of eating is pretty good. But there was a lot of things that weren't working. Um, I wasn't like ended up, you know, make, having to make great decisions anyway. So it shifted a lot of stuff in my body. And I realized I had a thyroid uh, 
condition, uh, autoimmune disorder called Hashimoto's. And um, I realized that when I was um, not able to have children, they realized that endocrinologists realized that that was kind of the shift point that it, it had gotten to. And so I knew I had to do some changes. So I started to do my own little uh, research and uh, look into things along with my course and cut out like gluten and uh, sugar. Um, lactose was very like dairy. I didn't do any dairy for a long time just to get myself back into a, and into a better like um, anti-inflammatory state. And like, so how how difficult one. did you find it to stop those three things? And how difficult do you find it to continue stopping those three things? Um, you know what? Like at first I was kind of like, you know, oh, I don't know if I can do it. And, um, you know, but when I realized how much it affected myself, like it long, like if I did go back to that revert to sugars and how I felt, um, I realized that it really had to be a continuous thing and it really isn't quite the effort like at all because you realize how the positive impact it has when you do abandon these things that aren't doing you well or serving you well right um, and so it just made me continue this process so eating a lot more whole foods and not to say I, I, I've become more mindful about it and I teach food inc inclusivity and weight inclusivity so it's not about like thin is in it's like more about treating your body and giving it what it needs so for me gluten doesn't serve me but it might serve someone else and that's okay you know um, I'm not saying there's good foods and bad foods either it's just how is it affecting you or overall systemic health um, and 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 that's what you have to take in consideration because everybody is everybody is different and that is what I teach everyone that I come across all my clients I teach everybody is different. There's no one set form. There's no set diet. You could, somebody can do really well on keto for a short term, I would say, or something pilot, like everything is short term, but diet shouldn't be in our, in our vocabulary. It should just be a way of eating. Right. So for me, that's how it became. It just became a way of eating. And, um, I think more of it became the, um, people who would look at me and be like you're too healthy you're too this and I was like maybe and then more in intern mindful perspective was they're kind of deflecting on me because maybe they don't feel so good about themselves you know and maybe I need to do some work with them a little bit to uh and then slowly they start to shift you know they start being like wow she really looks great so then they begin eating healthy and, and changing yeah. their mindset as well so so yeah, I think it's one step at a time. And maybe, you know, I started with the gluten and then kind of and went that way. But that was the main one that I had to focus on. That's really funny. Um, I guess if you are healthy yourself, it's a good starting point if you're going to teach people. So I think I, mean, I was going to ask you what will be your one take home message. I guess that will be it, is it? That there is no one size fits all. Pretty much. I think... Um, you know, I think because there's so much, uh, there's so many, there's so much diversity, you know, I also just started, a, um, I should mention, I just was going to mention, but I started a um, charity called the Nourish Well Community Project, which is um, healthy food initiatives for youth um, in low income communities facing maybe food scarcity. Um, because my business is Nourish Well, where I was doing hands on food initiatives for children and youth but because of COVID that all kind of went to a stop and then I um, kind of shifted gears towards women and women health like mainly over 40 that's where I'm headed so a lot of people have like a lot of these questions because we begin to shift again just when we get things straight it's again like a hormonal shift again so there's a lot of things going on in our bodies and um, and so I guess like with saying that being said it's that because there's so much diversity, you can't really say, well, I want you to eat whole foods all the time because it might not be affordable for some. And so you have to change gears and figure out what is the most important thing to keep these, this group healthy or what is the most important thing to keep me healthy. And that's why I feel like when you see these fad diets, it's not a long-term thing, a long-term goal. It should just be a lifestyle. Sure, that's fantastic. So um, tell us about your typical week now then. What, how does your week look? My week as in, in, in food or as in, in, no, in my week yeah, as your, in work and yeah, your, style? Yeah, your typical professional week. How does it work? Uh, 
well, it kind of, you know, I, I really enjoy the flexibility. However, I find myself very busy with um, clients online virtually now. Um, I also have a social media uh, page that I, I maintain. So I'm, I'm writing posts and researching information to keep on top of, you know, things that I feel are of value. And um, I post those as well. And then I also um, I'm part of a, uh, um, a volunteer associate uh, an organization called Brio de Soul USA, um, who de who provides education for children. So I'm the president of that. So I'm also busy um, organizing things with that as well. And. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of a little bit everywhere and I'm studying, still completing my mindful eating certification and my holistic nutrition certification, just finishing that up. So it's keeping me quite busy. That sounds a pretty busy week. Are you still practicing uh, in clinical hygiene? Right now I took a, a little bit of a, I call it soul battle, I guess, like as most people would say, um, I'm just, you know, after, during COVID I was working one day a week and I was in the city. So I just let that job go because it was, it was not, uh, you know, it was, creating more stress than needed um, to figure out ways to get in and out. And I just thought, you know what, I just have to uh, listen to what's inside and uh, take a break, take a step back. And as I said, I will start focusing on um, doing trip leading, more trip leading now that everything is opening up and we can travel again um, and focusing on that. So I, I will, I, I will probably get back maybe into some ball, like uh, temporary work or anything like that around this area, but. That's fantastic following your dream so so what the last question <laughs> where do you see yourself in about five years time where we where will you be in the future doing five what? years time if i could snap my fingers and like make it happen i would love to start a whole uh, wellness clinic a wellness um air, uh, facility i guess or or house in the in this area that that's by the lake i'm living now by the lake um, where it would have whole foods and uh, people could come and do like some yoga retreats and uh, more intimate uh, well-being, soulful uh, healing um, for the mind and body. That sounds brilliant. Book me in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get that. I'm going to get that. I put it out there. So, you know, it's just, it's making it happen now. Yeah. So. Tell the yeah. universe. Um, that's, that's fantastic. I've really, really enjoyed talking with you. Um, and we are really proud of you to have you uh, in our alumni as well. 